In this video, we'll be finding the limit as h approaches 0 of the limit definition of secant Okay, the first thing we're going to do is convert secant into 1 over cosine so everywhere we see secant will be replaced with 1 over cosine and notice in the numerator we have two fractions being subtracted so the way we handle that is by combining those two by getting a common denominator. So the common denominator would be cosine of x plus h times cosine. And now we have two fractions. right? We have a fraction in the numerator and then a fraction as the entire thing. So can we convert this into just one single fraction? And the way we're going to do this is to, to put h either in the numerator or denominator of the cosine fraction. So the way to think about this is you have one fraction which is cosines and then we're dividing it by h which is a cosine fraction multiplied by 1 over h so that h will be going in the denominator of the cosines. Okay, so the next thing to do is to notice that we have cosine of x plus h and this is a sum angle formula where cosine of x plus h is cosine of x times cosine h minus sine of x times sine of h. So we're going to make that substitution. And now we're going to distribute the negative. So the negative is going to be on the cosine x cosine h and then the negative sine of x sine of h. Okay. So now we can pull out a cosine of x. So we'll be left with 1 minus cosine h. And the nice thing is we can break this up into two fractions. So right where the plus is between the cosines and the sines is where we're going to break it in half. Okay, So they're both going to have the same denominator. And notice in the first fraction there's a factor of cosine in the numerator denominator which is going to cancel. And then in the second fraction we have sine over cosine which we can simplify as just tangent. So the next thing we're going to do is convert back from 1 over cosine to secant. So that's the only change here. And notice that we have 1 minus cosine over h and then sine h over h, which those are famous limits that we should know. So the 1 minus cosine over h is 0 and the sine over h is 1. So we're going to replace them in the limit, so for 1 minus cosine h over h, we have 0 multiplied by the secant. Well, anything you multiply by 0 is just going to be 0, so there's no point in evaluating that limit. And then with sine of h over h, that becomes 1, so we're left with tangent x times secant x plus h. So the only focus is on the second limit. If I plug in h equals 0, I get tangent of x times secant of x. And that is our final answer.